Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to North Shore Live, Cooper's Corner. The front page should read, should read, Operation, the similarities between Operation Greylord and Elder Cleansing. Um, so it should, should be uh, the sim similarities between Operation Greylord and Elder Cleansing. That's what we're going to be um, talking about tonight in our discussion. And um, first of all, welcome to our program, North Shore Live Cooper's Corner. I hope you're well. I hope the cold weather hasn't gotten to anybody yet. No one gets cabin fever. Um, and that uh, please don't shovel the snow. Um, hire yourself um, a crew to be able to uh, do your driveway because uh, um, heart attacks are quite prevalent. Uh, even young people um, have them because the snow is very heavy. Uh, I, I shoveled twice uh, and I could do no more uh, after going out in the morning and then the afternoon. It was really very heavy. That snow is impossibly heavy. <clears throat> so I uh, would like to uh, introduce you to my guest for this evening, Ken Dikowski, who is an attorney and was around at the time of Greylord, the Greylord uh, situation, and uh, can speak uh, regarding the Greylord, Operation Greylord, and what we're going through now with uh, elder cleansing. Same type of situation. <clears throat> but before we get into that, I was looking through some of my um, back issues of the um, Highland Park News, Yep, Highland Park News, here we go. Highland Park News, uh, there you go. And came across this article, which I thought was uh, most interesting. Um, it's on the top here, right here. And uh, the reporter is uh, Karen Berkowitz. Uh, um, I don't know if she's uh, just the reporter uh, for uh, the newspaper on this article or what other position she holds, but the article is relative to what we're going to be speaking about <clears throat> because it states that two caretakers were charged with exploiting elderly Highland Park couple. Um, and of course I said Karen Berkowitz is the reporter on this uh, case. And um, <clears throat> the two live-in caretakers who worked separately for a Highland Park couple have been charged with stealing at least $184,000 through unapproved ATM withdrawals, fraudulently uh, use of the credit card transaction, and double billing for services rendered. Double billing, yes, we've been seeing that with the elder cleansing, the nursing home bills, and the uh, caretaker's bill, that's double billing. That shouldn't take place because the nursing home <clears throat> or senior citizen or assisted living is paid for what they're supposed to be doing. There's no need for calling in uh, a second string, so to speak. The fraudulent activity dated back to 2011 was discovered by the couple's adult children during a review of the parent's account according to the police. Justina <clears throat> Kamoki, 32, of the 6400 block of South Stony Island, Chicago, has been charged with three counts of financial exploitation of the elderly, two counts of theft, one count of fraud, and one count of forgery. Letitia Lewis, 40, of the first block of Oxford Drive in Carp Carpentersville, has been charged with four counts of financial exploitation of the elderly and two counts of theft. Their court dates are pending. <clears throat> Isn't that marvelous <clears throat> that they're charging these people when, when you have guardians who are all guardians for profit who are stealing millions of dollars, one point five million dollars yep. in your mother's estate, several million dollars in the Sykes case. Sykes, yeah, that's right. And they're th and they're there. Uh, according to Highland Park Police, family members contacted police May the 9th. Uh, this is a November issue already. 
No, May the 9th, regarding what appeared to be fraudulent activities on their parents' account, the family member reported that they had reviewed their parents' financial records and observed transactions which were inconsistent with their lifestyle and traditional spending habits. According to the police, an in-depth investigation into the matter revealed that two separate live-in independently contracted caretakers were involved in unauthorized bank withdrawals, fraudulent credit card purchases, and duplicate billings. The transactions dated back to 2011. Both caretakers were arrested November the 11th <clears throat> after the case was reviewed by the Lake County State's Attorney's Office. Now, how this relates to the elder cleansing is that mm -hmm. these are um, uh, private caretakers uh, mm -hmm. that were hired, I guess, by family members. But <clears throat> the assisted living and nursing homes, they hire on top yeah, of... That's, that's all true. Except the problem is, this is a case that's being prosecuted. This absolutely here and in Lake County. Ninety-nine percent of the other cases are not are not prosecuted. Nobody prosecuted anyone for prospecting and harvesting your mother's gold teeth. gold teeth. Nope. No one is being prosecuted for stealing several million dollars from the from the Sykes case. No one's being s prosecuted for stealing $8 million from the Tyler estate. And you add these, thing add these things up in Illinois. Mm. Then you, you start looking at places like, like Florida, Florida, where you have the Barbara Stone case, mm. where they're arresting her. And then you have a case that I heard about last night of uh, Gail Hammer. It's coming out of... Uh, it's coming out of either either uh, San Bernardino County or Riverside County, where there's a dispute. Well, what basically happened in that case was the mother had been contributing very generously to both her children, and then she stopped. So the the male child tried to have a guardian appointed for her. The only problem he had was she wasn't she wasn't incompetent, but didn't bother the court. They, they point one anyway, and when the daughter objected, she got arrested by the Department of Probation. It's not even, she's not under any probation. They came and arrested her, and she's sitting in jail, and uh, Janet Phelan, who's Phelan. a reporter, told me that they're holding her on $500,000 bond. They won't tell anybody what she's charged with. The statute she's charged with would be elder abuse, but they won't put it in the facts. And they're basically doing, they're doing the same stone wall and the same type of thing that everybody ran across. When you contacted the ARDC and contacted the state's attorney and contacted all these people about your mother's situation, they looked at you like you're crazy. Well, that's what they're doing. They're doing in California. In California, <clears throat> and it's not. It's not the first time this type of occurred. It's not going to probably not going to be the last time. Now, when we're talking about Greylord, yeah, we're talking about a situation where. I think the public needs to know that paragraph. So I'll read. I'll read. Yes, please do. I'll that's read the very paragraph. Important. It's a three-and-a-half undercover three and a half year undercover operation that took place in the 1980s. The first listing device ever placed in a judge's chambers occurred in the undercover phase. When narcotics court chambers of Wayne Olson were bugged, in order to acquire evidence of corruption, agents obtained Department of Justice authorization to present false court cases for undercover agents' lawyers to fix in front of corrupt judges. In other words, it was, it was a setup type situation where the FBI actually created plaintiff and defendant in the dispute, and then went to fix, fix the judges. It, it was a sting. It was. A it sting. was a sting. Sting it was operation. A pure, okay. Pure adultery of yep. steam, and a lot of it was con was in the traffic court. 
Now, one of the difference between what's going on in the elder cleansing cases and the traffic court cases is the fact they're two different. They're two different courts, but they're they're both basically turned out to be cafeteria courts, where you have a flow, a tremendous flow of of people in a traffic court. If you remember the traffic court in the 80s, uh, there were almost as many lawyers standing outside the court as there were defendants. <laughs> and you walked in, and if you hired the right lawyer, bingo, you were discharged. Yeah. Well, in, the, in these elder cleansing cases, if you hire the right lawyer, you, got, you go along with the proper, proper guardian ad litem, et cetera, et cetera. The only difference is when they steal, they steal everything and leave you Nothing. in the in the yeah. in the uh, lurch, and this is what's going to happen in the Sykes case. There's there was a million dollars in gold coins, there was cash in a mattress, there were antiques, there were all kinds of things that she had, and they they're all going to disappear. Now in the Greylord case. Uh, read on the portion that you mentioned, how many uh, judges, how many uh, um, agents? S 17 judges, 48 lawyers, 10 deputy sheriffs, 8 policemen, 8 court officials, 1 state legislature. They were all indicted. Uh, the 17 judges indicted, 15 were convicted. One judge, Richard Lefevre, was convicted of 59 counts of mail fraud, racketeering, income tax violations. He got 12 years in prison. And did he serve that? Uh, I think he died. Ten, ten years after the undercover case concluded, the historical investigators, prosecutors, and trials concluded in 1994. It took ten years to get through this mess. And you've got uh, the chief judge of the Chancery Division, Judge Shields. Shields. Uh, he was indicted for stealing 2,000, uh, I'm sorry, 200 hours. That's what? how how low it it went. That, that's minuscule compared to what they yes. Of course. It was, it was practically nothing, but it shows the level of, of corruption that exists. Uh, it took a long time for them to bring the case. Uh, I complained about Judge Reginald Holzer. And what happened to me was what happened to a, a lot of a people. Lot of <laughs> uh, his wife came into my office to sell me insurance. I turned her down. And the next day when I went to court, my case was dismissed. The judge was so venal that when I took an appeal, which I usually did take an appeal when I, when I found a wired or fixed case, the city of Chicago, who was the defendant in the case, filed what was known as a certificate of error, and the appellate court reversed, reversed him. The finding. But it, it was so venal that you, you just can't imagine the number of times he pulled this thing, the number of, of lawyers that that bid on this and no, thing. no one reported this, but until well, I reported it. Well, uh, but it it took. I was never called as a witness. I mean, until the FBI stepped in <clears throat> to be able to set the uh, the bait. That's that's correct. One of the prosecutors told me at a party that he could have indicted just about every judge in the county. Everybody was dirty. Everyone. Just about everyone yeah. had something on him that they could have been indicted, indicted for. They chose not to because they didn't want to undermine the credibility of the judicial system. But However, the judicial system is supposed to go according to law. They weren't going according to any nobody law. Nobody ever asked they, <laughs> these people to serve as judges. Nobody ever asked them to serve in public office. They chose it. And they chose a profession that requires them to really pay homage to the Constitution. Uh, honor, integrity, loyalty, uh, uh, above all of the... Honesty. Honesty. Honesty, yeah, is, honesty. Is, is in capital 
letters. And that's one of the big problems. After Greylord, the one thing that they don't mention in, in here is the fact that a large number, almost double the number of judges, in fact, probably more than that, uh, resigned, resigned from the bench. So we don't know if, if the resignations were due to Greylord or were due to natural attrition but the probability is that a large number of them were told, if you don't want to be indicted, disappear. Resign. And they did. It's like your, the judge in your mother's case. Oh, she disappeared. She disappeared. She took off. Or, or, yeah. ju or she, Judge Stewart. Yeah, she took off. When Joanne started to complain about the fact that, that Stewart's testimony had been altered by the ARDC and... She started to complain bitterly about it. All of a sudden, Judge Stewart decided that her promising career was no longer promising and resigned and left. Maybe she had some pressing business. Elsewhere. But, <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> elsewhere, yeah. Oh, elsewhere. But this is, this is part of the problem. And Greylord is not, um, it's not a one-time situation. You have Silver Shovel, you have Incubator, Lantern, Operation Gambit, and Safe Bed, all conducted since Greylord, and all serious criminal procedures. You also have two governors going to jail. Illinois is. We, <laughs> and we have, well, as, I, as I said before, we have, I was told that the tax on criminality and corruption in Illinois is $3,008 per capita. So that's what you pay for living in Illinois and tolerating this type of, this type of nonsense. Well, we don't have to tolerate that. And there are people, Ken, that don't want to tolerate it. Well, they're, but not, you see they're, that they're not speaking up. <clears throat> uh, but they are speaking up, like in the Sykes case, and look what happened to her. Well, you, this is part of the problem. We can't, we can't tolerate this ISIS type of uh, assaults on our on our core values. It's a constant, it's a constant thing. But the real problem that exists is this: it's all over. Um, I pulled out a, an article from the internet, just fooling around this morning, looking at it about a leaked transcript of. Judge Peter McBride and the family and the family law bar control of the court in 1990 in California, 1991 California. It appears that in in Sacramento County in California, a group of individuals did did exactly the thing that's going on on the 18th floor of the probate, and they made a cottage industry. And if you hired the wrong lawyer, yeah, the, you got a bad result. If you hired one of their group, you got a good result. And that's part of it. In Florida, we have, we have this matter going on. Last time we, we talked about the Allens. And Glenda Martinez, yeah. Right. We talked about, Smith. about that. Colonel Smith, he's a right. veteran. Right. Yeah. And it's a constant, it's a constant situation. And then in Illinois, we've added another variable to it, and that's Jerome Larkin. Here we have a man who's running the the um, ARDC. The, the ARDC, yeah. but the ARDC is supposed to protect the public. Who's he protecting? He's protecting the criminals. Criminal. And he's not only using state funds to do this. But the criminals he's protecting are part of this cottage industry of elder of elder because, cleansers, yeah. and what's what's happening here is he's aiding and abetting the criminal activity. He's participating in it by acting in concert with them, and he's obstructing justice, and this violates a whole series of federal of federal situations. All right, so we know this now. Why isn't there justice to be done uh, and uh, if it was John Q. Public 
they'd get the book thrown at them. They wind up in jail. Why? Why is Jerome Larkin still walking around? Well, because there's uh, criminal activity that's that seems to be tolerated in this state. How do we have two governors in a row in jail? In jail. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe they're. Uh, they're visiting. It's uh, I, uh, hard to say, but uh, you know, uh, after all, uh, Walker, Jimmy Walker, he uh, he was mm. in jail. Yeah. Well, we had we had Kerner. We had Kerner Wa Walker, and we had and we had people associated with Kerner, Ted Isaacs. Oh. He was big in the insurance industry, and um, at one point in time, his company. Prudence Mutual, I think it was, was insuring all the all the interstate trucks, and this company had practically that's a good contract. Yeah, he, he had practically no assets whatsoever. We've a, we've tolerated this this thing, but getting back to these these two parallel situations, the key item here is the corruption. So, Operation Greylord. That was named because of the judges. The, the judges. The 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 situation involving the judicial system, and the cover up that went on on there. If you look at the ARDC at that point in time, uh, you don't see much going on over there. Do you think these people didn't know what was going on in traffic court? Of you course. You think they didn't know what was going on and the bribes that were here? So the traffic court, which is the lowest echelon, you could probably tolerate. I mean, that's what's going on. They figured it would be easy to um, manipulate uh, that area where uh, in uh, the elder cleansing on the 18th mm -hmm. floor, that's the money maker because you've got all these people. Oh, it's tremendous amounts of money. $1.5 million from your mother's estate, yeah. $2 million from, from the Sykes, Sykes estate, case. eight from Tyler. Oh, yeah. And you start adding these things adding these things up it's a lot of money and the distinction between these these two situations the ARDC is acting exactly the same except Larkin wants to shut people like me up like Joanne up Joanne. anybody who will complain about this this situation he wants to shut them up and he's doing he's doing a job this is what makes Larkin more dangerous and more of a of a terrorist than any of the others because he is undermining the core values of America. Well, he is a threat to society because he's allowing the criminal element to walk free amongst the people. Well, he's, he's and protecting. he's not even, uh, and that's right, and he's protecting them, and the public has no knowledge of who, who they are mm -hmm. and to stay clear from them. And so they're not being punished for their their criminality, the the public is being published for their uh, intrusion into their cottage industry, the attorneys and judges that are fraudulently doing what they're well, doing. They're, they're violating their oath of office. Every single one of them is, off, is violating their oath of office. And Larkin, by protecting these people and by trying to shut up you know, when I was when I was being prosecuted by him, his his attorney asked me if I was repentant for writing the attorney general. I was there. I heard that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody I, heard it, but and they can't get over it. How did that? How does it occur? Are, did we wake up last night and find ourselves in North Korea? How can that occur? It's an assault on the First Amendment. Amendment. That's right. And when you start looking at some of the things that have gone on at the ARDC, you get really you get really worried. You know, we, we separate we we um, celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday. We celebrated it by uh, by uh, taking a lawyer who is an American of African descent. He actually comes from Nigeria. Uh, yeah. yeah, and. We took away his license for three years. The Supreme Court took away its license for three years, knowing by reading the complaint and the opinions 
of the hearing board that there's a racial nexus. If Mr. Ermew had not been of a darker hue, his skin had not been a darker hue than you and I, nothing would have happened. They, they reached out. Maybe they reached out because they intended to prosecute people on the eighth, for complaining about the 18th floor. Sure. So they wanted to show that it was a uniform situation. Matter of fact, uh, in one of the opinions, in the opinion in Joanne Dennison's case, they actually have the nerve to cite that. You know, it's like, it's like citing um, the, um, I can't think of the case now. There's a, a case, a very famous Civil War case, holding that, uh, that Negroes are property. I can't, I'm having a All senior right. moment. A senior moment. But, but it's, it's like citing that case. You just don't cite. You don't cite but this he, case. But he is an honest man. We had him on the program, and we put his um, story on the YouTube. <clears throat> he has, <clears throat> excuse me, he has um, uh, about uh, three thousand five hundred view viewerships, and uh, in I think it's uh, maybe uh, uh, three months ago. <clears throat> Um, people are watching and listening to that, and they, they've contacted me. They want to know, this man only brought to the attention of the court the theft and criminality of what was going on in the case that he was dealing with because he was helping a man who had a broken leg. And, and nobody complained about it. And, no. and, the judge, and the judges didn't even testify, no. didn't deny it. no. But and and then but she Larkin left. The, and, proceeded. Then, and then she left the bench. Let's see. Of course, uh, of course. Now, one of the things that occurred out of Graylord uh, was the Chicago Council of Lawyers on February 6, 1990, made a statement which became part of a, a lawsuit. There were a series of lawsuits brought by by lawyers who. After the after the the barn had burned down and the cow had escaped, mm -hmm. Marvin, uh, the ARDC decided they'd go after a couple lawyers, and they went after to the show lawyers. good faith. Is that what they're trying uh, to well, do? Well, it's part of a cover up. They're, they're, okay. You have to do you have to do something. Show something. Okay. The, these lawyers made gifts. Uh, I guess they were they were originally loans, but then they became gifts. gifts the, Le, the Mrs. Lefever. Oh. And they gave them a, they gave a thousand dollars each, <coughs> and of course the Supreme Court found that there's nothing wrong with this. But the Chicago Council of Lawyers wrote, "Moreover, with regard to disciplining attorneys implicated in Operation Gaylord, the Supreme Court has treated less prominent attorneys far more harshly than prominent attorneys." with similar ethical lapses. This leads to the appearance that who you are or who you know may be more important in the result in the Supreme Court than the merits of the case itself. The Supreme Court covered itself with real glory, showing, its, showing favoritism, bias. Are we bias. talking about the U.S. Supreme We're Court? We're talking about the Or Illinois. are we talking about Illinois? Illinois Supreme Court. Well, hello. And Welcome to Illinois. Mm. This is what I tell Mr. Amu when he was on. He was, he was, his heart was, was breaking on the air when he said, he held up the Bible, he said, I tell you the truth. I'm telling you the truth, what I've done. I help these people. I come from Nigeria. I came to America to be a citizen. I, he holds mm. four master certificates Four mm. in four different disciplines, and he chose uh, law because he wanted to help people. He is the most gracious and humbling gentleman I've ever met, mm. and honesty. Uh, he exudes with honesty. And when he told me on well, the uh, air, practicing law and honest, honest, an honest lawyer attorney, practicing, yeah, that's incredible. Practicing in Cook County, that, that's incredible. But he <laughs> he said uh, that he told the judge 
that he found that there was an error because there was uh, corruption in his particular mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. The judge became very distressed because this was brought to the attention of the court and he wanted her to do something about it. And um, she removed herself from the situation. She didn't, she didn't um, uh, rule on it, but removed mm -hmm. herself from, from the bench on this. Um, and the findings that Mr. Amu had uh, found were that uh, the judge and uh, the defendant, um, the defendant's uh, attorneys were related to the judge. Mm -hmm. You see, Mr. M Mr. Amu had, se had several problems. He, several problems. One, he's practicing law while black. No, you can't Two, <laughs> he's got. He's got four degrees. Four master's degrees. Yes. Four different disciplines. Did you realize how many times it took our oh. former mayor Daly to pass the bar exam? I think three he or four times. Yeah. Mr. Mm. Mew passed it the first time. I know. And, and having four degrees? Four. And then com complaining, about, complaining about a, a judge? The corruption to the judge. The same judge that mm. has the corruption going on. And she was just couldn't, stilted. Can't, can't tolerate that. She was just that, stilted. That behavior from an American, from an American he, of African he descent. Said, he said he was so um, because he's a, a Nigerian national, and he, when he became came to America and became an. Well, he's a an US, American now. Uh, he's an American, and he's he said in Nigeria this happens all the time. But when he came to America, he thought everything was different. That this doesn't happen in America. Well. Maybe not in all America, mm. but in Cook County. Oh, it, it's <laughs> in Cook County. <laughs> it, it appears. It appears we've got we've got problems. We have a an attitude, <clears throat> an attitude with uh, some of these these ISIS-like individuals. Don't confuse me with the facts. I made up my mind. Made up, yeah. And this is what goes goes on constant, constantly. Imagine. Imagine here in Cook County. The number of federal stings that have gone on, the number of public officials who've gone to jail. Well, um, and it's continuing because <clears throat> one doesn't learn from the other. Well, you know? we've got we've got the cover up, <clears throat> and the Supreme Court appears to be a rubber stamp for whatever Larkin wants. If he can get away with this thing, if he gets away with with the interim, the interim suspension of Joanne. Well, now you'll me, encourage Larkin uh, even further. Let me just p um, put this out for you. Uh, I know that you've written to uh, the Attorney General for, of the United States, <coughs> Eric Holder. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, now, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Eric Holder's wife and the presumed um, uh, candidate for the attorney general's position, um, uh, Loretta Lynch, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. were sorority sisters. Are you aware of that? No, I wasn't aware of it, but I am aware that Eric Holder is an honest man. He's the, he took as a young lawyer, Dan, took on Dan Rostenkowski. That's like an ant attacking an elephant. And he was successful. Rostenkowski went to jail for stealing $3,000 from the, the post. Now, any lawyer or any individual who would undertake such a thing, such a, a project, has to be an honest man, has to be an honorable man, and is entitled to uh, respect. And well, you have been writing him for, it's got to be over a year already now, I've been Ken. writing a long time. And so have you received any? any I won't. 
Why? I won't. Until such time, <clears throat> because the federal government operates on the idea that that investigations are not public. And there's a need to know situation. So I won't, I won't be in any uh, communication of this nature with the federal government until they decide in their own discretion when to act. And if you look at the number of, of years it takes, it takes for them to proceed. Gray Lord is basically is a 10-year prosecution. It's actually longer than that. It's probably 14 years. Uh, this one in California that I referred to with the three judges creating their own panel. Um, it started in 1991 and the article is dated 2013. We'll all the, be great, great grandparents well, by then. The federal <coughs> government takes the position that when they indict you, they are going to get a conviction. And they make sure they have all the ducks in line. And it's frustrating as hell. I, get, I, I can imagine. And I would like to see something occur right now. Well, we all would, absolutely. And especially considering Larkin is such, uh, is such a, uh, a person who who has no respect for our core values, he's a cancer. He's a real cancer. He's eating away our values. We have a First Amendment. We have a Constitution is what we have. Yeah, we have a Constitution, but he ignores it. Complaining about public officials is as American as apple pie. There's no public official that's going to satisfy 100% of the people. And there's virtually no public official who isn't going to be scrutinized in such a manner and be looked at in such a manner that someone is not going to call him a crook. And you have a right to do so. I don't have to like any of the candidates for, for uh, president, president in, in uh, 2016. I don't have to like any of the candidates for aldermen or mayor, or anybody else of that nature. And that's my right as an American. And if I find that a particular public official committed a crime under 18 U.S.C. 6, 4 rather, I have an obligation, if it's a felony, to report it. Okay, so you've reported all of this. Where? What's happening? Well, Why? But, but Larkin is <clears throat> Larkin is punishing me by a four-year suspension for reporting the criminal activity that I know about, and I've got affidavits to back it up. I've asked a dozen times. One simple question: You accuse me of lying. State the state the not the statements that you see are untrue. Every Producer. statement that I have made is backed up by affidavits of people of actual knowledge. And so he doesn't do anything. He won't do it. He can't do it. He can't do it for me. He can't do it for Joanne. He can't do it for Amir because he's got a problem. When the guardian ad litem writes, writes to him yeah. and complains that my asking probate, probate sharks to join in uh, asking for an honest, complete, and comprehensive investigation, that's an ethical violation. <laughs> it's, it's absurd. It is absurd. But he owes that guardian ad litem something. Why should he have to owe anybody? The law is a law. Why is he above the law? I don't who, know. Who is above the law? And why does he feel Appar he is above the law? Apparently, all these people involved in elder cleansing, this whole cottage industry is above the law because they're getting away with it. Well, how do we stop it? I, I ask you over and over. We, we go on the air, we tell the public about what's going on. There's got to be someone out there. Maybe they have uh, had this terrible thing happen to them. How do we get to the point where 
you know, we can um, make a charge. Uh, it's legitimate. It's honest. Uh, while they are uh, destroying uh, uh, a senior citizen and uh, tearing apart a family. Well, one, of the things, <coughs> one of the things has to be the use of the ballot box. We've got to get rid of some of these, these judges. They are up for retention. The fact that, that they're retained every single time indicates that that retention system is not working. We have an organization, the, the uh, Judicial Inquiry Board, that's got to be staffed. We have a new governor. Let them staff that, uh, that board with people who will do something. Uh, under the Americans with Disabilities Act, yeah. the Justice Department is charged with protecting senior citizens and disabled people. And that's federal. Okay. And that's federal. And I've made complaints. I've asked other people to make complaints. Write these letters. Send this stuff to the ADA, the Justice Department, and let them do something about it. There's certainly, there's certainly problems. Uh, the ADA has, sec has Section 42 U.S.C.A. Uh, 12203, which prohibits Larkin's actions. Uh, There's that, laws that has, to be, that has to be brought out. The federal government has, has to do this. They've got to change it because this is an imminent danger because we have people who go every day, who go into dementia and reach the point where they need help. And we can't have a situation where being old creates a problem of loss of liberty, loss of property, isolation, I don't want the federal government to look into my case when I'm lying, I'm lying in my own urine in, in a nursing home. God forbid. But we have, but we have that type of situation going on. It's ready, but people have to complain, complain to their congressman, complain to the. How do we know? How do we know that these judges, these people in these places that. Uh, self-ascribe themselves as uh, Lord and Master <clears throat> ridiculousness are not uh, are or are not uh, mentally competent to hold that position. Most of them aren't. Most I, of them aren't. They are the not competent. The incompetency that existed in the Sykes case. Do you realize we have a situation in the Sykes case where they never bothered to get jurisdiction? They didn't comply. The statute is 755 ILCS 5 slash 11A-10. It requires a special summons. There was no summons. It requires 14 days prior notice on Mary. There was no notice. There was no summons with it. As a matter of fact, when they went out to serve her, they were given an address in Cook County when they knew she was living with the petitioner in DePage County. The sheriff could no more serve Mary there as he could serve God. You remember that guy in California or in Utah who sued God? Well, it's the same type of thing. There's no possibility of service. Yet, yet they proceeded. They're supposed to give notice to the close relatives, Mary's two sisters. They didn't even bother mentioning them in the mentioning them in the uh, petition. They never gave her any notice, no prior notice. But of course this doesn't matter because they never had a hearing anyway. You're supposed to have a hearing. Section, uh, section 11A-5-3 requires that they make a reasonable accommodation for whatever infirmity Mary has. How do you find it out without a hearing? There was no hearing. Now. Judge Connors took the position during her deposition that she didn't know. Yet, recently produced by the ARDC, the Joanne, was a letter from Cynthia Faranga. Cynthia Faranga was one of the guardian items. Cynthia wrote the judge that Mary was in DePage County. So the judge knew it. Didn't do a damn thing about it. 
we, when she was asked on her deposition, she said if she had known about it, she would have vacated everything. And, but the same result would have occurred. This is, uh, this is at page 90, 91, 92. How could the same results occur? I, I because it's fixed. <clears throat> because it's wired. It's wired just like the Greylord cases is. If you hired one of the lawyers at traffic court who was paying uh, 2,500 hours a month to Judge Lefevre or whoever paying to, mm. um, you could guarantee that you're gonna, you could win the case. You went to see me, you didn't know where you were going to win or lose. Just being honest with you. I couldn't, I couldn't guarantee it, but if you went to see one of those lawyers hanging around, hustling, hustling the people, you won. You knew you won. Because it's fixed and wired. In the probate division, you got the same thing. This is your, this is your parallel. You got exactly the same type of uh, going thing going on. You have at least two psychiatrists who are, who will find anybody incompetent. Yeah. If President Obama had a fight with someone well connected, they could take him into the probate court. And they'd find him incompetent, and they'd appoint a guardian for him. That's how bad it is. We in that um, in one of my cases, uh, Jay Cox was Robert Jay Cox. Jay Cox. You can look at the, you can look I at that. you can look at the thing. <clears throat> how pathetic! That's very pathetic. Yeah, yes. exactly that occurring. Exactly that occurring, and you have this going on case after case after case, and the. Procedure is the same. Railroad in, into guardianship. Isolate them from the family. Once you've isolated them from the family, bingo. You can steal all the money. Person's, the person is drugged. And when they complete the reclamation or the distribution of the booty, bingo. Suddenly the the uh, individual dies. Who dies. Yeah, dies. When you can't get any more money out of them, that's it. Goodbye. We call. I call it uh, involuntary assisted suicide. Now that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about death panels. You're never going to get there. And if they don't do something about it pretty quick, you or I may be there. Or maybe Mr. Larkin will be there. Mr. Larkin. <laughs> he's got a better he's got a better Medicaid. chance yeah. than either you or I yeah. because <laughs> because our children will raise holy hell. Yeah. But his children have been have been conditioned that this is an appropriate way to go. This is what they do. This is what they do. And you're gonna see this is the reason that we have to to do something about it. Well, and you're talking and you know, they're talking about the cost of health care. It's been said that there's a 300% fraud charge. Are we running out of time again? We're good. We're good. Don't okay. Uh, <clears> the <throat> 300% charge on that. Well, we're going to have more. What is really disturbing and distressing is we are now finding new cases, new cases coming up on the 18th floor. Mm -hmm. New cases that are not going as they as they are supposed to be, uh, but we are finding new cases that are going. They scheduled. This is mm -hmm. uh, they're on a schedule because they are protected. <clears throat> Greylord went on as long as they possibly could. So until the, the indictments came down, they were still taking. They were still taking the bribes. Even after the first Greylord case came down, the judges were still there. It was, it was years into the, into the prosecution that Judge Shields took the two, $200 bribe. And the bribery didn't end at that point. The day the bribery, the day these people are more empowered, 
They really are. Uh, I sent you, I sent everyone, especially law enforcement, a synopsis of how you, how you bribe. You don't do it with the cash anymore. You don't, when you want to bribe a judge, you don't give them a $2,500 hour payment a month. You do that, it's just plain stupid. Because you're going to get caught. However, you can give, give them a campaign gift. That's legal. And you can give them any amount. That's Citizens United. The Supreme Court has said you can do it. And people have argued, many of the same people who are, who are engaged in the, in the bribery themselves, <coughs> have argued this leads to corruption. And of course it does. And you have the conflict between First Amendment and the bribery. But as a practical matter, and this is, this is part of the problem we have with any democracy, if I'm going to give a campaign contribution to Judge X, I'm going to, I want something in return. I'm not going to give him more than a nominal amount, the three dollars on my income tax, <coughs> if I don't get anything back or haven't received something in the past. There are very few people that will go out and give a hundred million dollars to Northwestern University wow. because they're, they're altruistic. This is what um, was given them the other day. Very, very few people are that altruistic. I'd virtue to say that less, less than 90% of people have very, very little altruist, altruism and, and they want something back. When you give money to, to the church, you're giving money for absolution. Sure. You're not, you're not really giving it because of the fact that you feel that the church really have, ought to have a new parking lot. Mm. Oh. Black topped, please. Yeah, black top. Yeah. Okay, black top the parking lot. I guess you've been involved. You've been <laughs> on the board of, of a religious <laughs> organization too. I got thrown off one because complaining about the parking the, par the parking top. lot. Mm -hmm. But you have you have this. So you this campaign financing comes comes into play. If I want if I have to give the judge a hundred thousand dollars to get off a, <clears throat> a murder conviction, I can see he gets it through a campaign fund. He can pull that money, he can pull that money a number of ways. He can pull it by uh, having all kinds of people on his campaign committee and they pay, and they're paid salaries, their cars, or but all kinds. What if these judges aren't running and they're appointed, then what? There are very few, very few. It's all he has to do, according to um, the Chicago Tribune, one of their columns is that all he's got to do is give give fifty thousand dollars in cash to the ward committeeman, and he'll be on the ballot to get elected. Wow. And it's been wow. <clears throat> it's been known for a long time that you buy judgeships in most. In well, then, most what's counties. the idea of going to court to have your day to be heard if if the corruption is so corrupt? Well, it's. It, you see, the is this just, these are just words? In many instances, in certain instances it is. In most instances, you go to traffic court, you got two people, <coughs> not, not go to traffic court, you go in, into the law division on a traffic type case, and you got two people, the judge doesn't <coughs> know either one of them. He's got nothing better to do, so he gives them a fair hearing. You got a level playing field. The, where the playing field changes is when you get someone with clout. And this is where the corruption comes in. And it's, it's heavier in, in counties in which you have one political party. Well, <laughs> Cook County is one political well, yeah, party. It's true. And oh, it is true. Where you have, <clears throat> where you have this, you, have, you don't get a level playing field because the person with clout can move the judge up or down. If if my best friend is Judge X and I play poker with him, I play racquetball with him, uh, my wife and his wife are friends, 
he's going to lean towards me. And that's the reason we have conflict of interest laws. <clears throat> but that's not going, but that's, that's one of the big problems. But when you get down to this campaign financing, this is a big, a big area. But campaign financing is not the only is not the only one. If you notice those cases, I referred you to the four lawyers who gave a thousand dollars. Yeah, they gave it to the wife. Loan transactions are are a big deal. Uh, employment of friends and relatives is a big deal. This is the way you 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 go in connection connection with it. Another way is we're going <coughs> to we're going to have to make a, a part 2 on this Ken because I don't want uh, I don't want you to lose the momentum because there definitely mm -hmm. is a connection here. Uh, I know our time is running out. I don't know should we do we have we only have uh, one one minute left. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's all right with you Sure, no problem. We'll make a part 2 on that. Please, that's very mm -hmm. important that information you've given out. Uh, and you can uh, contact us. Um, well, we're going to see this on YouTube. Eventually, it will get on there. Um, uh, and you can also contact me at bev.cooperscorner uh, at yahoo.com. If you are running into any of these situations, um, I know that um, uh, we've expressed a great deal about Cook County, about the corruption on the 18th floor. And if you are in any of the other counties, uh, Lake, DuPage, uh, Kane, uh, Kendall, uh, McHenry, please uh, contact me, let me know, um, and we'll gladly have you on the program. You could tell your story of what's going on. The public needs to know there needs to be more voice out there to be heard. So uh, we're going to do a part two of this. Um, and uh, hope you will uh, participate with us to uh, let others know what's going on. So thanks for coming. You're welcome. And uh, we appreciate uh, your, uh, your uh, indulgence uh, regarding the situation here. And uh, see you next week on North Shore Live Cooper's Corner. Have a pleasant week, a very safe um, evening, and a very safe weekend. And uh, be careful of the snow. Take all the precautions you need to. Contact your elderly relatives and senior citizens. Make sure they're not alone. Thanks for watching. See you next week. <laughs>